What's up YouTube? Today we're going to take a look at lead code problem number 1468, calculate salaries. Mark this medium, let's get into it. Now we have a table called salaries which contains a company ID, employee ID, employee name and salary. Our task is to write an SQL query to find the salaries of the employees after applying taxes. The tax rate is calculated for each company based on the following criteria. 0% if the max salary of any employee in the company is less than $1,000. 24% if the max salary of any employee in the company is in the range of $1,000 and $10,000 inclusive. 49% if the max salary of any employee in the company is greater than $10,000. We should return the result table in any order, round the salary to the nearest intern integer and the results should look something like this. It's actually the same format as the input salaries table, but as you can see, the salary is slightly adjusted. In this case, Tony got a huge tax cut of nearly 50%. He's in the 49% case. He just received $1,020 after taxes, and his initial salary was 2000 and so on, we have probably some case of someone having zero tax, which would be Bessem and Hermione, which are on the same salary after tax. So I think, I think that's easy to understand. It's just about being able to calculate the tax rate per company and then applying it to the employees of that company. And that's what we're going to get into right now. So as I said, the hardest part is probably to come up with that tax rate and then applying it. Applying a tax rate to the actual salary is going to be easy, right? We just need to multiply that or divide it by 1 minus the tax rate. So if you have 49% tax rate, your salary is going to be 51% of your initial salary since 49% are being deducted. So you could take your initial salary and say salary times in brackets 1 minus tax rate and you will get the salary. So I think we're going to be able to do that. In the case of 0% we don't have to actually do anything or just say 1 minus 0 would be times 1 which would be trivial. Anyways we, we, we're going to be able to take care of that but let's see how we get that tax rate says it's based on the max salary of any employee in the company. So if any one person in the company makes more than $10,000, which could be the CEO or something, then every employee gets a tax rate of 49%, which doesn't make much sense in my opinion in the real world, but it's, it's what our problem statement says. So let's start, up, start out by calculating the tax rate per company. And as I said, we're going to use the max salary of any employee for that. So let's just start out there. Start out easy, baby steps. So we're going to select max salary, as I said. And we want to do that, we want to get that per company. So let's select company ID as well. Before that, we're selecting from salaries. That's our only table. And we're going to group by company ID to get the maximum salary per company. Let's run that, our baby code, initial code. We get 21,300 for company one, 700 for company two, and 7,777 for company three. So that means company one has the case of 49% tax rate, since um, the max salary is more than 10,000, company two, is less than a thousand, which means they have the case of zero percent tax, and three is in between a thousand and ten thousand, which means they have twenty-four percent tax rate. All of these employees at that company. So I want to take this initial code and use it as a subquery to look up the tax rate per company. And that way, if I rejoin that to the initial table salaries, I'm just going to have one more column that says tax rate. Right? So I'm going to have company ID, employee ID, employee name, salary, then tax rate as another column from that subquery I made here. And then I'm going to be able to do what I said before, just 
apply that tax rate to the salary by having that multiplication. So this is going to give us company ID max salary and we know which cases these are by going through these bullet points but we don't have that in our code yet. We need to code that up somehow. So we have that case of 0, 24 and 49 and we're going to be able to check for these max salaries which we have in there just by using if or case statements which yeah makes a lot of sense and seems quite obvious here to me since it says if the max salary is less than a thousand then we're gonna take zero percent and that's pretty much a sentence that already expresses that we're using if or if that's the case then so we're gonna do exactly that so instead of using the max salary, we're going to check the value of that max salary. So if max salary is less than, sorry, less than a thousand, then we're going to have that 0% tax rate. Okay, I'm just going to put zero in here, and if not, 49. Let's just do that one case. So I'm using the if, con mm, if notation in MySQL here, which is way shorter than the case, when, then, and, which you would have in other SQL dialects, or that you could also use in MySQL, but you can pretty much always rewrite that if as a case, when, then statement, so it could be case when max salary less than a thousand then zero else 49 and same thing probably also brackets not sure I'm not using it that much yeah but that evaluates to the same thing just like if because it's shorter as you can see so you're gonna have your condition here after the comma, what happens if that is true? And after the second comma, what happens if that is false? So let's call that tax rate and run that. See what it gives us. So right now I only have the case of 49 and 0, but we have that other case of 24 as well. I just didn't do that yet. So we have 0% for company 2 and 49 for the others, but Actually, we want to check again whether that's between 1 and 10,000 or greater than 10,000. So I think what we can do is we can just check if it's greater than 10,000, then it's going to be 49. And if, not, if that's not the case, it has to be between 1,000 and 10,000. Since we already check for less than 1,000, and then if we check for more than, uh, than 10,000, anything else is going to be between these values, right? So I'm just going to add that other if condition of being higher than 10,000. So let's think where I put that. If the max salary is less than 1,000, it's going to be zero. If not, it could be one of the other cases. So that's where we're going to put our other if statement. So again, if max salary said I wanted to check for higher than 10,000, then it's going to be 49, otherwise it's going to be 24. Nice. Okay, it's a bit hard to read these nested if statements, but took care that is correct. And let's run that to see if it is actually correct. So we have 49 for company ID 1, which I said has that person earning 21,000. So they have the highest tax rate. Two has zero because their highest earnings were 700. And then three is 24 because they had 7,777. So that is correct. That, yeah, that was tough. But that is already the majority of the problem being solved. So we can look up the tax rate of each company now. And what I want to do is as I said, just get that tax rate as a new column into the salaries table. So we're going to have company ID 
employee ID, employee name, salary, then the tax rate here, and then we can just apply that tax rate to the salary. Say salary times one minus tax rate, and that that will give us the, uh, the result. Perfect. So let's call that taxes. Put brackets around it to make it subquery, and then we can join our initial table to that. So if we select star for now from salaries joining the subquery taxes, so salaries join taxes. We need to specify on what we want to join. And that would be salaries.company ID. We have that in both tables. Is taxes.company ID. Then we should get all fields from salaries and then again company ID and tax rate from our taxes table, which we just made. All right, that is a lot of output, but we see we have company ID, employee ID, employee name, salary, company ID, and tax rate. We don't need company ID in there twice, but we can see that they match. And we have the tax rate of 49 for Tony here. Perfect. Okay, so what I want to do right now is get closer to the solution by just selecting the fields we need. In company ID for the output, employee ID for the output, employee name and then hmm, let's do salary and tax rate and we also need to specify which company ID because company ID is in salaries and taxes they are matching but SQL is going to be confused if I don't okay so now we have company ID, employee ID, employee name, salary and tax rate so basically just one more column at the end here, which is tax rate, and that is exactly what I wanted. Now I just need to combine them to be able to calculate the, the end salary. So let's clean up a bit here, and I just want to do some, for, some form of multiplication here, and that should give us my corrected salary. Okay, so let's think about this for a moment here. Using these actual values of 49 and 24 wouldn't really work with multiplying since it's not a percentage, it's actual integer numbers. So instead of using 49, I could use 0 0.49 to denote 49%, 0 0.24, and then 0 or 0 0.0. .0. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to keep it at zero. So if I use one minus tax rate here, as I said, then I'm going to say salary times 51% or times 0 0.501 for the case of 49% tax rate is going to give me the updated salary. And same goes for 24 and zero. Okay. Let's just call that salary or adjusted salary and run that to show you what I mean. So we have 1,020 now for Tony, 10,863 for Pronup, which is also correct, and the other values seem to match as well. So that looks good. Um, I could also do Maybe it's more straightforward to say salary times or well, salary minus salary times tax rate since that would remove 49% of your tax. But yeah, I, I feel like that calculation is simpler for me. That's what I would actually do. If I have 30% tax on my salary, I'm just going to calculate what 70% of my uh, salary. Okay, what's left to do is rounding the salary to the nearest integer and also making sure we have the correct column names. So it should just be called salary again. So let's get rid of that adjusted and underscore and also round that. We're going to just use the round function. If we don't supply anything after the comma, 
it's yeah, going to round to a full integer. If we supply anything after the comma, it would round to two decimals, for example, which a lot of questions also want if you want to calculate a percentage or something. But this should round to the nearest integer and we should have the current column name. So it should be accepted and it is. And if we submit that, it should also be an accepted solution. And that's it for that problem. So this one was pretty hard for medium, I would say, but it has a lot of upwards. It's a nice problem because it also allows you to kind of progress through your solution and come up with a sub-solution of getting the max salary per company, then getting the tax rate per company, then tying that back and then calculating the final salary. And it seems like a realistic problem that you would have to do in a government agency or if you're in finance for a startup, this one was asked at a startup, then you could come up against a problem like this. If you want to come up against more problems exactly like this, you can check out the video playlist on YouTube on medium difficulties or easy or hard, which I have. And otherwise, you could just subscribe as well. Anyways, that's been it for this video. See you all next time. Bye.